Welcome to the Fish Bowl Word, everybody. My name is Chief here, and joining me today is Jalen. We're going to be doing our Louisiana Raging Cage versus Texas State preview here. And we're also going to recap what happened this past weekend against Minnesota. Without further ado, let me introduce everybody to Jalen. Welcome to the Fish Bowl, Jalen. Hey, what's happening, Chief? Nice to be back on the fishbowl. I wish I could give some great news about UL coming out with the dub this past weekend, but it's all right. With TJ Finley coming into town, we're going to see what happens with this Cajuns team. All right, so take we're going we're going to go back a little bit on Saturday, um, which happened and uh, the the loss, right? So I I thought the Cajuns played a very good game offensively, and you know that. Defensively, I thought the Cajuns played well, considering the fact that Minnesota had a lot. Like the Cajuns' defense is built to stop some belt uh, offenses, which are generally, if you look across the league and the board and everything, they're typically smaller offensive linemen. The Cajuns have a lot more speed on their defense. They're not used to like playing the bigger guys, right? The 350-pound offensive linemen. They're, you know, they're like 280, 290 kind of size offensive linemen is typically what you see in the Sun Belt. So, I mean, that looked like that was a big advantage to Minnesota here. Maybe if the Cajuns could have got more uh, speed on the outside of the thing, they might have done the work a little bit better. But considering all that, I thought the, I thought it was a very good performance by the Cajun offense here. I think Zeon Chris actually ignites something in that offense that you wouldn't see with Ben under center. Um... You know, there was some questionable call about the pass interference, like an offensive pass interference that wasn't, that should have been called on Minnesota when they scored that touchdown catch right there because, you know, he'd been right under the ball if he hadn't pushed off of him. You know, like he slowed himself down basically there. But without, I mean, even if that does get called, then that doesn't happen. Uh, and Minnesota doesn't score that drive. I still think they beat the Cajuns. We were correct in Minnesota beating UL. Um, but... Jalen, what did you see this past weekend? I saw a good game out of uh, Zion Chris. I mean, he came in kind of with high expectations because because uh, it's a it's a big test against a team in Minnesota, a Power Five school. You want to see what uh, Zion can do, and I think he played a pretty good game. I mean, yeah, he has to work on those uh, those turnovers, but other than that, I mean, I think he played a, a solid game. The defense really. Uh, exceeded my expectations. You know, I know uh, Minnesota's able to get a couple of great big runs in there at the end to try to seal the game. And, and like you said, some calls were kind of like, uh, like that either had to be made or weren't made. But I mean, Cajuns only lost by 11. I think both sides of the ball played pretty pretty well. Special teams came out and, and played better. But I think overall it was a great, it was a great team loss if that made sense against a power five school because they had a lot to prove and they came out there and kind of gave Minnesota a scare. Yeah, I think that was uh, one of the things that you can really look at here with the Cajuns. I think they played a very good game. I think overall here, some people are saying they're not making adjustments at halftime, but I, I've seen some stuff. They were definitely, the defense definitely looked a lot better when the second half compared to the first half. So the people that were talking about that kind of stuff don't know really what they're talking about at all anyway. So, um, I mean, there's that, but if you look at, like, you know, he made some freshman mistakes out there. The two interceptions was definitely part of an issue there that, you know, that will be worked on and addressed. It's going to be a bumpy ride with his decision-making this year because he's got to get used to the speed of starting in a college football game. The speed of college compared to high school is a whole different animal. That split second that you think you can get in high school, you don't have it in college. Same thing whenever you leave college to go to the NFL. That's why usually the half, later or half of the year, if you play fantasy football or anything, they'll tell you, you might want to start the rookies in the second half of the year. You know, that's kind of one of the things because uh, they got to adjust the speed. Once they get down to – um, you know, adjusting to the speed and that kind of thing there, you play better. You um like that it, it's a whole different animal that they're trying to accomplish of mastering that skill there. But I think with you know, Zion Chris's running ability is really gonna help him out this year because you know, he'll give him a time like, hey, they're gonna have to account for him trying to run the ball. They're gonna set a spy for him 
And that's going to take one guy out of coverage every single play because if you don't set a spy for Zion Chris, he's going to run all over you. And if you do set a spy, you can't drop him back into coverage because he's going to tell you run or pass, you know. So it's going to be one of those things that we're going to have to watch out for as we get later on into the year, how teams will game plan towards him and stuff. But I think this is interesting Uh an interesting concept that I think we have going on this weekend that I don't think a lot of people are talking about here. And let me just say this. This is a philosophy battle coming on this weekend. The two biggest games of the Cajuns are going to be played against uh, Texas State and Georgia State. So that's going to be two big teams that they're going to play in the coming weeks for sure. But philosophy, how you approach today's college football is going to be at stake on Saturday because – the philosophy that Desimo preaches and adapts is we're going to build our guys up. We're going to recruit them straight from high school. We'll build them up for two or three years, and they'll stay with us, and we'll do the four-year traditional college aspect, whereas you have the Colorados of the world and Texas State adopting that same formula. Look, we wasn't that good this past year. We're going to take a bunch of players and bring them in and try to overhaul the whole entire roster. You got that new age mindset, and we'll see which one really plays out. Does it work better to be in the go for the transfer portal, or does it work better to do your traditional route? I think you got to have a little bit of a mix of both. Um, you see a primary example I could use is LSU trying to patch up their secondary with transfer portal guys, and it's not working out for them. There's a reason why they're in the transfer portal. Granted, is it a big – you're not going to – like the big-name guys might try to get in there and like maybe try to switch schools because they like their head coach a lot. But, you know, sometimes I guess it's just kind of on a base-by-base case, case uh, a case-by-case -case basis to see what um you think would be the best one for your team here. So, Jalen, what do you think about uh, Texas State coming to Cajun Field this weekend? I think it's going to be a great game. I love seeing, uh, you know, T.J. Finley coming, going from LSU to to Auburn to going over to Texas State, and you got Zion who took over, uh, for for Ben, and he's playing well. So Zion versus T.J. Texas State versus K the uh, Raging Cajuns at Cajun Field. I think it's going to be a, a great game. It's a national televised game. It's must see. I mean, I think it has, it has big Sun Belt implications for both teams because the Cajuns looking for their first win in conference play, whereas Texas State already has one win. They're trying to go 2-0, and o, trying to stay atop uh, the uh, Sun Belt West. So I think it's going to be it's going to be a, a great – I think it's going to be a great game. How are the Bobcats going to stop Zion's legs and how the Cajuns are going to stop TJ's legs? I think that's going to be the keys of the game. But I think both defenses are, are, are pretty good. The run game, I mean, it, is, it was – Excellent for Texas State against uh, Southern Miss. I mean, I think they got he had at least over 100 yards where that was either on um, rushes or, or on kicker. I think he's the return guy too. So he, he, he the guy played a pretty good game for Texas State, and that's building momentum for them as they go on the road because they just beat Southern Miss. Now they're coming right down the road, which is not too far from the golf court to Lafayette to play the Raging Cajuns. So I think it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good one. But I think also the Cajuns run game has to uh has to honestly like play just just a little bit better. I think. Draylon Washington is, is the key. I think he's the explosive guy that the Cajuns need to, you know, keep going, feeding the ball some more. I mean, yeah, they have this running back, running back by committee, but I think I think Draylon Washington is the one who can spark this team in that backfield. I could, I could see that being a very good possibility with uh, Draylon Washington. You also got Jacob Cabote here. The strength in this Cajun offense is through their running game, I believe, here. And, um, you know, Zion Chris, if they – because if Texas State loads eight in the box or seven or eight guys in the box here – and you start throwing the ball on them, you're able to complete those passes. I think they've got a, got a good opportunity to really stretch the field on this Texas State team. I think if I'm the Cajuns on the first play against Texas State, I'm throwing a deep ball. I'm a, I'm not going to tell them – I'm not going to show them that I'm not afraid to throw it deep here and really attack that defense to get them off of the line of scrimmage because that's probably what they'll do is load up seven or eight in the box and try to force the Chris to beat them throwing the ball and, you know, really challenge uh, the Cajun offense here. But I think the strength in the Cajuns here 
is the work of their offensive line. I thought they did a really good job against Minnesota, even though, like, because they were able to run the ball on Minnesota. They were able to uh, get Sean Chris and space in the uh, running game in the first half. And they just, you know, Minnesota made the better adjustments. And they're able to beat the Cajuns the past weekend here. But, you know, T.J. Finley having that SEC experience here, it's definitely going to have uh, have it with him here. He's got playing time experience here. Um, he went to LSU, then I think he went to Auburn. I think this is his third school here. Um, the Cajuns here, let's do our predictor and see who they predict is going to win this game here. Um, as far as it goes here, I think it's going to be interesting to see here because you got Texas State being 4-1, and one, Georgia State being 4-1. and one, And, you know, they're kind of uh, – the only team I think, like, I think the Cajuns could win the rest of their games. I think there's a possibility in a road there for them to do it here. So um, just looking at what the predictor has, it's got the Cajuns winning back-to-back games against Texas State and Georgia State, 28-19, 28-24 is the next two games here. It's got Cajuns finishing 8-4 and four still in the year, which is plausible here. Uh, I mean, they got South Alabama right after down the road. Arkansas State's right after that, too, which their freshman quarterback doesn't look too bad himself there. Um, Southern Miss, they're definitely like one and four this year, which is kind of a little bit of a shocking uh, revelation to me this year because I thought they'd be kind of in the mid-tier of the Sun Belt West for sure. And, uh, you know, like you have to kind of prove it and see it, what's going on here. And the way it's looking, it's looking like uh, it's going to be a, a tough fight for everybody here. So... We're going to look at the prediction of the Sun Belt, who, uh, what they got left here, what's going to happen with the standings here. And uh, it's got predicted, it's got Troy being 9-3 and three and being 7-1 in conference. It's got the Cajun finishing second in the West at 5-3. and three. Uh, You know, it's kind of interesting. Um I don't know. It's got like Southern Miss winning two games in the Sun Belt. Got ULM winning one, which is because uh, ULM. I think ULM is going to look a little bit better than what they got right now. They're two and two. It's got them only winning one more game this year. I don't know if that's kind of. I think ULM definitely looks better than what this thing's giving them credit for. Um, let's see. So ELO. Right now for the Cajuns, if you're looking at a ranking kind of base system here, this is at 53. The strength of schedule for the Cajuns is 128, and their opponent win percentage is 39.6%. If you're rounding up to 39.7%, you have 129 this year so far for the rest of this year. So the Cajuns usually handle business here. So um, yellows between Minnesota and Texas State is kind of the same. But we'll see what happens here. I think uh, this is a tough one. I think if the Cajuns can keep an eye on T.J. Finley, not and I would let him try to beat beat me through the air for sure. If I was uh, the Cajuns here, I would want him to try to do that here, try to stop him from using his legs and try to shut down the running game because uh, try to make that offense one-dimensional as much as you possibly can. I think that's the way for the Cajuns to win this ball game here. Now – Cajuns have to take take care of the ball. Since Zion Chris has got in there, turnovers have happened more frequently than they would have anywhere else here. So if you look at that here, if the Cajuns take care of the ball and they ride, they ride behind that offensive line, they're able to control the line of scrimmage, I think the Cajuns beat Texas State here. And you know what? Until Texas State actually beats the Cajuns, that's uh, I got to I gotta go pick the Cajuns because until they actually do it in real life, then I'm going to keep picking them. So I got the Cajuns beating Texas State to win their first Sun Belt game of the year. Who you got, Jalen? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Cajuns also. I mean, I know T.J. Finley is, is like having this nice little run to where he comes to Texas State, he kind of changes the program. But I, I just feel like just because you throw a quarterback uh, in a program, in a new system, it doesn't mean he's going to go and beat, you know, good teams. I think the Cajuns are a really good team. And I really think if they are like you said, if they're able to contain TJ Finley and make him beat beat them through the air, and if he can't do it, the Cajuns are going to come out with the win. And I just think Cajuns are going to take it. But I like your point earlier, like you said, with, with Coach Dez. 
He's the type of coach to where he he recruits him, recruits his players out of high school. They stay with the, the program a couple of years. They get the reps and they become full time starters. I like that. I mean, a lot of grown players now. I mean, look at Deion Chris, the quarterback he is now because he started out uh, as a uh, recruit out of high school. So I think that they they build great players, and now those great players need to show up in these big time moments. And I think that starts with national this national televised game against uh, Texas State. I think one thing as well that I forgot to mention here is that Dance's way is something that I don't think a lot of people actually talk about too much, chemistry, knowing how someone's going to run a route a certain way, knowing how someone blocks a certain way. Chemistry is something that doesn't normally get talked about with football too much because you can put every great player on one team, but if they ain't got no chemistry and understanding how someone's going to do something, it's going to be really bad for you because if this guy blocks a certain way and I'm moving in a certain way, I'm a quarterback. That guy's going to come sack me if I move the wrong way, you know, um, or if I can't trust the guy that has my blind side spot, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hurry a throw or it's, it's called trusting your guys around you, right? You know, they're good players, but if you don't trust them, that's a whole nother, uh, um, aspect of the game I don't think a lot of people have talked about here. Chemistry is a big thing in sports where, you know, like, you know who you're you're very compatible with. Like, uh, it's almost like a, a relationship, right? <laughs> um, you got to find guys. You got to put the right stuff in it to get the right things out of it, right? So um, you got to put the right pieces in the right spots and know how someone does this better. And that's why you hear guys mention Devontae Adams and how well he runs routes. That's something that his quarterback can know where Devontae Adams is going to be when he throws the ball to him. That's something that Zion Chris is probably learning as he goes as being a starter in a game time situation because I don't know how that receiver is going to be in this spot here because he hasn't played with those guys, right? I mean, he's played with them, but he hasn't played with them as much as like Ben and the rest of those guys have. So the chemistry thing does take time to develop. So it it all it is is time. Like I said, it's a freshman thing. And once they weld it all together and form that bond with each other, I think it's gonna be a really good thing on for him in the passing game. But yeah, I think chemistry is something they have to look at here and their transfer teams. Probably I have a harder time getting the chemistry together because of the fact they hadn't played with like it's it's more difficult to like um take someone that's known each other for someone for two months and play, a, like, you go play a pickup football game, you someone you just met, like, off the streets, and you've been knowing someone for two or three years. You know how someone runs playing a pickup football game compared to someone you played, you maybe met, like, a month or two ago. So just that bond makes a big difference, and that's what, that's what the transfer portal teams are – Going to have to figure it all out as they come along here. So, but yeah, I got the Cajuns winning here. What do you think about chemistry, Jalen? You know, I'm glad you brought up chemistry because it's it's crazy how uh, Zion, you know, got uh, put in the game for Ben. He only played a couple games as a starter. And the fact that he's built, you can see it, these chemistries built with freshmen, uh, Harvey Broussard, and young guys like Robert Williams and Charles Robinson. Like, these are guys who didn't get significant or any, like, a lot of, you know, a lot of meaningful reps last year. And the fact these guys are coming in and they're, and they're, they're catching, like, every pass. The fact that they're, they're running routes, they're beating the corners, and they're getting touchdowns. I mean, I forgot which, which game it was. Uh, the last the Cascades uh home game, which was against um Buffalo, it's like it's like Zion just had the connection with with Harvey Broussard. Like he could just find him on every single possession. I just thought that that was just incredible because Harvey Broussard is, is a you know freshman come straight out of St. Martinville. So it's like if if this is what the future is for the Cajuns, it's looking great. Oh yeah, like if you keep that, so far. that team. and Des's plan to recruit these guys straight out of high school is, is looking terrific. Yeah, if you keep that team together, it's a wonderful thing. But you know, you have that I think that's what Des is looking for. I think he's looking for chemistry people that are all gonna work together. TJ Finley's thrown for almost fourteen hundred yards and ten touchdowns, so it's hard to argue they don't have chemistry on Texas State, but um 
yeah, that it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. Um, the line right now for that game is one point. The Cajuns have a one point advantage, so they really don't know who's going to win it. So we both pick the Cajuns to win. So let's get down to it and pick some Sun Belt games, Jalen. Marshall versus NC State. Marshall is undefeated so far this year. Who you got in that one, Jalen? Marshall versus NC I'm I'm gonna go with uh the Thundering Herd. I think I think Marshall is gonna keep their undefeated streak going. Uh I'm gonna disagree with you. I think NC State does beat Marshall. I, I think they'll get a, just enough here. I think a touchdown wins in form, which is about where the line's at anyway. So Arkansas State taking on Troy. I got Troy winning this one. I think Gunnar Watson's gonna be able to get the job done for him. Uh for Troy. And they'll be able to spread the ball around Arkansas State's defense. Who you got, Jalen? No, he is a he is a nice, nice quarterback. And the fact that he's led them so far to a one on one record in the Sun Belt, it, it it says a lot about the way he's playing. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the Trojans. I'm gonna go with Troy this game. All right. South Alabama taking on ULM uh this weekend here. So um I, I think South Alabama, they've had a little bit of a disappointing year so far. They're two and three. 0-1 oh, to some, but I do, I do think they pick up their first window against ULM. Who you got, Jalen? Uh, this is kind of a tough one because these are two teams that are like right there in the uh in the middle of the pack. But I think I'm 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 gonna go with the uh, the home team on this one. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with uh, ULM. I think they'll come out there and um play and just get the win. I think they get the win. Old Dominion versus Southern Miss. I have, man, this is kind of an interesting one here. It's at the Rock. It's in Hattiesburg. Uh, oh, Southern Miss just doesn't look like a very good team this year for whatever reason it is. Old Dominion looks very good on defense, and I think that's something, uh, you know, Wiles of uh, you, uh, Southern Miss is going to have to, like, stop turning, throwing interceptions and turn the ball over. He threw five so far this year. Um for five games. So he's gonna probably throw a pick this weekend if the average is correct. Um so give me old Dominion. I think they'll beat Southern Miss at home. Uh on the road. What you got, Jalen? Who knew Southern Miss was gonna be last so far in the uh, Sunbelt West? Because I know I didn't see I didn't see this one coming, especially with some of the guys they have uh returning on the roster. But I'm I'm gonna go with Old Dominion also. I think Southern Miss is just is just struggling this year, and yeah, I'm gonna go with Old Dominion. Their defense looked great against the Cajuns. Sorry to say it, but but yeah, they did. So I'm gonna go with Old. Yeah, I mean that's the way it goes here. So, um, I mean, hey, we're gonna have a lot going on uh, next week here uh, on the Fish Bowl. We got a couple of early Sun Belt games. Like I know Coastal's playing App State on Tuesday. Of the on the tenth, so that's gonna be an early week one for everybody. The Cajuns have a bye week next week, so um, with that here, I mean we can probably see what's gonna happen here. Uh, granted, we might not even do an episode. We, we'll probably actually recap what happened and just kind of move along from there. Because I mean, like, hey, we'll just do a little recap what happened and kind of really take a deeper dive into the game and just kind of see what happens with that. But Thank you all for tuning into the Fishbowl Radio, everybody. I think we've covered everything we can do here today. Also, don't don't y'all go to a game at Earl K. Long for the volleyball team. They're having a good season so far. Even the soccer team is having a good year so far. So, look, they're both doing a very good job. They're doing their thing out there. They'll go out and support them, ladies. And uh, you know, we're not we're not that far from basketball season. About a month away from Louisiana Raging Cajun men's basketball going to defend their Sun Belt crown this season. And the women's basketball looks like they got some new uniforms. They're gonna look it's gonna look nice out there on the floor. So I'm interested to see what's gonna happen there with those. Uh Jay, anything you want to say before we get off the air here? Uh I just want to say, you know, first of all, go Cajuns. And second of all, I wanna uh re- reiterate uh, what you said, Chief. Like go go and check out all these Cajun games. Soccer. Football, like basketball, is coming up. Volleyball is playing pretty good. I just it's so it's so many sports that you can watch if you're a raging Cajun fan or even alumni. Go out there and check it out because you're not gonna miss any of the action. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it's gonna be a very fun time to be a Cajun fan here. So we'll see what happens here 
as we move along later on this year as we head deeper into the college football season here. So thank you for tuning in. Me and Jalen will pick the Cajuns to win. Hopefully that's the case on Saturday. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we will pick the Cajuns to win. Hope you see you again next time. Hope you have a great night, Fishbowl Nation. <laughs>